Let's face it, watercolor paper isn't cheap, but it's also the absolute most important part of this whole watercolor thing we're doing here. So yeah, paint on junk paper and your art may start to feel more struggle and less joy. I go through watercolor paper like, well, water. And so over the years, in an effort to keep my kids' college funds intact, I've gotten pretty serious about affordable but good watercolor paper. This series is all about paper and all about discovering the absolute best paper possible for the budget you have planned, period. First up is budget papers. I am quantifying these that are a dollar per sheet or less, and a sheet for me is nine by 12. Most of these are under 50 cents a sheet, which is awesome. But let me tell you what, they're not all created equal. So before I get into testing each paper extensively, let's take a look at what we have. New Soho Sketch, it's a mixed media paper, but honestly, I included it here because of its traditional texture. It's thin, only around 90 pounds. Gen Crafts, many of you may not have heard of this brand, and it's a wood blend, wood pulp type situation, but it's really thick. The texture's odd compared to what you might think of with traditional cold press paper. Strathmore Vision, pretty basic, pretty standard. Amazon Basics, yeah, yep, they make a watercolor paper. Canson XL, cellulose paper, everybody loves it for budgety stuff. Let's see how it stacks up. We've got the Fabriano Watercolor Fat Pad, and this is a cellulose cotton blend. Strathmore's 300 series, Arteza watercolor paper. We've got B Paper Company, the watercolor notebook, 100% cotton, and it's a budget paper. Interesting, let's see how it measures up. And last but not least in this one, barely made it in Strathmore 400 series. This one gets a lot of rave reviews. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the content of the paper because it really doesn't matter much. Within the budget category, you've either got cellulose or wood pulp based paper, and then there are a few with a little bit of cotton content or oddly, that bee paper with 100% cotton. And for each paper, I am running through the following tests. I'm doing an even controlled wash. I am seeing how wet on wet works. I'm taking a look at glazing. I'm also stress testing the paper under a lot of contiguous friction to see how many seconds of continuous excessive pressure it takes to make the paper pill. Love this test. And then I'm going in with tons and tons of water, lots of saturated color to see how the paper reacts. And you're gonna wanna stick around because you guessed it, I am going to choose a winner in the budget category. This could be the paper that you can rely on consistently for practice and even for some of your really amazing work. There is one clear winner and I think you're going to be shocked. Here we go with the Soho paper. Now remember, this is actually a mixed media paper. It's the only paper in the whole lot that is actually considered a true mixed media and not just a watercolor paper. Definitely super thin, but I felt like it could be promising because of the texture of the paper. I'm pretty impressed so far. That even wash was effortless. It really didn't take much work to get that color and that pigment to spread down evenly. All right, next up, we're trying the wet on wet. I wet the page first and then dab, dab, dab some color in. Friends, just so you're aware, today I'm exclusively using my M. Graham watercolor palette. And what am I looking for with a paper that I would consider handling wet on wet? I wanna see that the pigment easily moves when I apply it to the wet page. I wanna see that as the pigment dries that there's not a lot of weird, unexpected, harsh lines happening. And I'm not seeing that here. So, so far, so good. Moving right into the glazing technique. Now, what I'm doing for this one across the board is creating kind of a petal shape. I'm gonna come back later with a glazing later and see how it works out. Here is the stress test, pressure test, whatever you wanna call it. I'm applying medium to heavy pressure over and over circular motion 
and scrubbing, scrubbing that color on. And I'm counting here how many seconds, how many seconds does it take for it to start to pill? And we come in right around 10 seconds. I'm not sure how that's gonna stack up to the others. Here's the thing about pilling as I add the really heavy wash of water on the bottom here. This is our last test for each brand. The thing about pilling, with a budget paper, I wanna make sure that that paper can take a beating and not disintegrate and start to break down really quickly. And I say disintegrate because literally some of them feel like they're disintegrating. All right, can't tell much about these heavy, heavy washes right off the bat. I wanna see what happens to them when they start to dry. Does weird stuff happen? Is it gonna dry weird? Is it going to encourage the pigment to kind of gather and puddle and pool in strange places? Or is it gonna be really forgiving and great for beginners who might beat up the paper a lot? Next up, it's Gen Crafts. I mentioned this one earlier. It's super thick, nice 140 pound, but honestly, it feels heavier than that. Let's get in there with this even wash. And right off the bat, I love the way this paper is accepting the pigment. And I'm gonna wash it down with a little more water on my brush. The point here is I'm trying to make as even a possible little square of color. I want that color spread out evenly, top to bottom, left to right. And I wanna see how difficult that is to happen. Is the paper kind of grabbing the paint and soaking it in quickly? And is it allowing the pigment to stain the paper? When I start to move the color and the water around, is it puddling strangely? And so far so good. Heading right into the wet on wet and I immediately noticed that on the wet on wet, the paper seems to be grabbing that pigment, little dots of it very quickly and soaking it right in. And that's concerning. Now friends, don't come at me. I have a very instinctual relationship with how I talk about pigments and water and all the things that go into this, not a very technical way of talking about it. So if you have anything to add to the conversation that will kind of scientifically explain what's going on, feel free. We'd love to hear from you in comments. Just adding the petal here for my glazing experiment. Here comes the stress test. Let's see how many seconds we get from Gen Crafts. I have pretty high hopes, just blindly based on the thickness of this paper. And I think it might be a good one. I think it might be a good one. We're still going. We are still going. I can't believe it. All right, we're at about 12 seconds, friends, 12 seconds. So it definitely lined up with the Soho paper. And don't forget, friends, we're gonna come back later and look at these super heavy, saturated, juicy washes to see how the paper accepted them. So far, so good. I don't see any weird pooling or puddling of the color. And don't forget, we're going to be testing the lifting technique, which is so important to make sure that the paper doesn't stain quickly and easily, that the pigment can rest on the surface of the paper. So you can take time and decide to remove color at any point during your painting session. Next up is Strathmore. Strathmore has a lot of watercolor papers, the 300 series, the 400 series. I think they even go above that. I've never used anything above the 400 series. The Strathmore Vision paper doesn't even really feel like a cold press. It's got a smoother finish, which was surprising. The Strathmore Vision paper, just in terms of cost, is definitely Definitely more affordable than even the 300 series, which is their student grade. So let's see how it performs. Getting that even wash of color on there. And I gotta be honest, it's pilling immediately. There's a graininess to the way that the pigment is kind of soaking into the paper. I'm not loving it at all. Really frustrating. Not to mention that I made the color muddy because my brush wasn't clean. But that's got nothing to do with how this paper is reacting to the pigment. Wet on wet, pretty standard, lots of nice movement. It's not grabbing the pigment strangely with little dots of saturated color like Gen Crafts was. And it's also got enough texture, even though it's a smoother paper, it's somewhere between a hot press and a cold press. It seems to be taking the wet on wet technique pretty well. Stress test came in at 11 seconds. All right, next up is Amazon Basics. It feels a lot like the Gen Crafts, not quite as thick. There is just no information about the content of this paper, but wood pulp is my guess. This even wash here is pretty effortless. I used a little bit too much water, so the process of scooping it back up and kind of 
resurfacing that area with pigment and water felt pretty effortless. It got a reasonably even finish. So pretty nice, pretty nice. Wet on wet. Let's see how it does. Boom, boom, boom. And look at that color traveling. Pretty impressive. I have to say here across the board, this is early on, but most of the papers I'm using and reviewing here today are performing really well with wet on wet. So, you know, just a little spoiler there for you. And the stress test, swirling around, lots of pressure, beating up my brush. Don't anybody get worried? I got lots of brushes. No, but seriously, you don't need to do this test on your own because I'm doing it for you and keep those brushes lovely and safe. And we've got a good 11 seconds. Sounds good to me. Coming back later to check out that incredibly heavy, watery wash. Canson XL is consistently a bestseller on Amazon. It's recommended time and time again for a beginner watercolor paper. I've mentioned before on this channel, it is not a favorite of mine. And you can see already with how it is taking my attempt at a really smooth, even wash. It is puddling strangely, unpredictably, and that's always been my issue with Canson extremely unpredictable. Let's see how it does with the wet on wet. So far so good. I honestly don't have any complaints with how it handles wet on wet at all. Friends, I just wanna make note that one of the colors I'm using on the wet on wet example is highly granulating. So that is not a function of the paper. Stress test, friction test, whatever you wanna call it, 12 seconds. So it ranked up there pretty well with the others. You may have noticed or not that I'm actually adding a few spritzes of extra water to those heavy, heavy, juicy washes at the bottom. Cause again, I wanna see how well the paper handles an excess of water. The Fabriano Fat Pad, I'll be honest, I didn't even know this was a thing. This is incredibly thick, 140 pound, but it feels like, gosh, at least 200. It is taking this even wash. I gotta be honest, I'm feeling like I got a little arches vibe going on. It was effortless, effortless. There's a little bit of strange pulling at that right hand side, but honestly, I think that was user error. Um, I'm pretty impressed. The wet on wet, nah, it's got those dots. They seem to be collecting, but with a little more blending, it would probably be just fine. Really nothing to report there with the wet on wet. It's acting like I would expect. And there's no, I'll say across the board, all the papers I've tried so far, the one thing I've seen with some papers is that it almost inhibits the explosive nature of watercolor. And I really haven't seen any of the papers inhibit the explosiveness. And that is a good thing. I got high hopes for this stress test. I feel like it should be the best performer by a long shot because it's thick, it's got a beautiful grain, beautiful texture, and I am so wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm just wrong. Eight seconds, eight seconds. Fabriana, are you kidding me? Ugh. Don't forget friends, we're gonna come back through all of these and take a look at lifting and glazing to wrap up our evaluation of all these budget papers. So definitely stick around. And while you're at it and paying attention, <laughs> would you give this video a boop? That's a like to help others who might be interested in some really awesome budget papers. They can find us better when you like the video. Moving on to Strathmore 300 series. I'll be honest, when you see me painting on YouTube on a white surface, it's on a big 18 by 24 pad of Strathmore 300. And honestly, I often paint on it little things on the side, little sketches, and I've never really had a problem with it. Now take a look at that beautiful even wash. There is nothing wrong with that wash. I, I venture to say that it handled the even wash more consistently and predictably than the Fabriano fat pad. So. Gotta, gotta give it props. Definitely seeing the wet on wet impacted with this particular paper. It, the color isn't just, it's just not moving like the others were. The others had kind of an ink response. Now I am using M Graham, which is a super saturated uh, pigment that notoriously travels well. This particular paper kind of seemed to put the brakes on all of that activity and movement happening compared to the other papers so far. Again, if you wanna talk about the technical reasons all these things are happening, the paper content, we wanna hear from you. This community is full of incredibly intelligent, talented, and insightful folks, so don't hold back. 
Here's that friction test again. I gotta say, friends, this is like my favorite test because if your beginner budget paper can't take a beating, it's not worth it. Just not worth it. Nine seconds. Eh. Next up, the Arteza watercolor paper. This brand is a powerhouse in kind of the beginner watercolor market. They have got it all. The paper definitely feels thick. It's got a very uncommon texture though. It's kind of got these horizontal lines that are very obvious. So if texture is important to you, that might be something you're not really excited about. I will notice in the wet on wet, uh, for the color to really be explosive, there has to be almost little puddles of water, like the puddles really force the explosion. And that could definitely be a little bit of a hiccup in your painting process if you wanna get those color explosions, but you don't really want puddles on your paper. So just something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at how much of a beating this paper will take. Pretty thick, it feels thick underhand, not quite as thick as Gen Crafts and the Fabriano Fat Pad. And I'm, I'm shocked, five seconds, friends. Honestly, I will say this, no, no hate to Arteza, but friends, this paper is a hard no for me by that fact alone. Five seconds under moderate stress and the paper is giving way. The paper company, friends, I've heard nothing but rave reviews about this paper from professionals and beginners alike. It's 100% cotton and it, happily and easily fits in the budget category. It's definitely a little thinner. I don't know the exact paper weight. Somebody can tell me in comments. The even wash, pretty good, pretty consistent. And the thing about the even wash that's gonna give it kind of an A grade for me is that it was effortless. It didn't have to do a lot of blending. I just had to have kind of a, the right amount of pigment versus water on my brush. And it just took beautifully like velvet. The wet and wet, nothing wrong there, nothing wrong at all. I mean, let's face it, friends, this is 100% cotton. This paper, in theory, should be our winner. You're gonna have to wait around to see. All right, stress test, friends, here we go. Need a little more paint on my brush. You can see, like, I'm beating up my brush in order to get this stress test underway. And what? Oh my gosh, five seconds. Five seconds. B paper, B paper. Now friends, I painted on B paper recently. I'm gonna link it below. I did a Scandinavian seascape and I gotta be honest, I felt like it was okay, but I definitely felt like the paper was giving way. It felt somehow soft under my brush. I can't really explain it other than that. And the five second situation is making complete sense now. Strathmore 400. Many folks swear by this paper. Absolutely no cotton content here, friends, which is shocking, but let's get into it. It's got a traditional cold press texture. I'm expecting it to take this wash really well and easily. And yeah, that's not happening. This paper easily, it's streaking, which to me says perhaps the sizing is applied unevenly, inconsistently. There's just some strange things happening here. When I stroke my brush across, it's picking up the color unevenly and consistently. Um, it's drying very quickly and that is shocking to me. I'll, I'll let you know a little secret, friends. I never really loved Strathmore 400 series. I have a small little tablet of it and I've had it for years and it has still got empty pages in it, which doesn't say much for the paper because I go through paper, like I said, like water. You can take a look at the wet on wet and I feel like it just sits there. The paint doesn't wanna continue to travel. And that for me is a bummer, especially for a cold press. You would expect that on a smoother paper, but not on a cold press. Let's see the stress test. Just a note here, friends, obviously, you're not going to be painting in this way. You're not gonna be scrubbing so hard that your bristles are going all over the place and all the things. But I like the stress test. It's an important test because beginners are classically very heavy handed. This isn't a bad thing, it just is a fact. Take a look at what Soho Paper has to offer us in the 
glazing, applying additional color department. I'm gonna just call it glazing, but friends, just know this experiment here on the petal is about how the paper takes color, how it allows me to shade and kind of model an area on the paper. Is it doing what I want it to do with different levels of water? Those are the questions I'm asking myself. All right, as we're working through this second round, going back to each paper, I want you to take a look at the big blue splotch at the bottom of each page. And I gotta say friends, Soho paper as expected, it's allowing me to add a variety of color. I'm using different levels of water, slightly different levels of pigment. I'm getting nice blends between those colors. I'm pretty happy with that. As I was saying about the big blue blob, I want you to look for really strange weirdness. Now, you would expect when you lay down a ton of water, like an obscene amount of water, and a lot of pigment, that strange stuff is going to happen. But a paper that's forgiving and a paper that is friendly to beginners is going to have less of the weirdness, for example, like the Gen Crafts. Look at how much less weirdness. Now, of course, I can't say that I laid down the paint exactly the same way each time on the bottom of these cards, but I gotta tell you what, friends, the Gen Crafts blow in my mind. Just wanna make a note about the Soho. The lifting was so-so. Eh, eh, I was pretty disappointed and I was expecting to be able to lift a lot more color off of that surface and definitely more than I was. Back to Gen Crafts. Really impressed with that big blue splotch at the bottom. It's actually pretty even. It dried really lovely. Let's see how it lifts. I gotta say, I think the Soho performed a little bit better with the glazing, shading. Uh, you can see some little weird splotches where the paint and the water kind of did some weird stuff, but nothing too worrisome. And the lifting on Gen Crafts is primo and I'm actually scrubbing a little I'm not getting a degradation of paper quickly look at that lift gorgeous you're gonna have tons of flexibility with the gen craft paper and lifting let's move on all right let's glaze some color on top of here and get another color in there and see how things function see how the blending happens is it effortless does it feel like it's just I'm fighting the page, adding a little bit of a more intense orange here, a little bit of a red, and let's see what happens. I don't have a lot of water on my brush. And all right, yeah, see, the blends are harder here. Now, this is a brighter red than I was using on the previous two, but look at these blends. They're splotchy, they're strange. I honestly, after that smooth swatch test on this card, on this Strathmore Vision, I did not have high hopes for any part, adding a little water in here, trying to make these transitions smooth and it's just fighting me every step of the way. Look at how frustrated those strokes look on that petal. Let's try some lifting and immediately, we had a three second fail on this paper with pilling and lifting is a no, no go, no bueno. Strathmore Vision, friends, it's not winning. Artisa, gosh, look at that strange texture. What is up with that? But you know what? If the paper functions, then I'm okay with the texture. Laying on that medium orange that goes on nice and smoothly, bringing in the red. Let's see how these transitions work. Is a lot of the color being lifted up from underneath the yellow that I laid down initially? Oh, we've got some nice transitions here. I'm happy with that. I'm pulling back, pulling out some color, lifting, and I, I'm getting effortless ombre gradient from a light to dark. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Lifting here, the big blue splotch. Notice the big blue splotch doesn't have a lot of weirdness. I think it's pretty forgiving with beginners who might use too much water, too much pigment, very forgiving. And the lifting is lovely. I wish this paper could take more of a beating that five second fail. Amazon Basics. I'm telling you what, this paper is kind of shocking. All right, laying down that medium orange, lovely. Lovely, two of those strokes, they bumped up to one another and they blended on their own. I didn't have to force it. That redder stroke next to the orange, redder, redder, is that a word? Sounds weird in my mouth. Anywho, look at that blend. Lovely bit of water. I'm using all different levels of water on this petal and that blend is pretty decent. I'm not upset about that. Let's add a little bit more of that red. I've got some orange on my brush from before, but that's okay. And it's letting me do some nice things where I'm able to kind of model the surface of that petal in a way that I want, in a way that I would expect. A lot of weirdness happening in the big blue splotch. 
A lot of weirdness, and the lifting is, yeah. Mm-mm. I was actually expecting the lifting to be better given that we had a longer 11 second fail on the paper, but the lifting, it's just, it doesn't wanna budge. It doesn't wanna budge. And remember, these are all the same pigments. These are M. Graham watercolor, super high quality professional pigments. So this is definitely a factor of the paper. Canson XL, remember this is a fan favorite. It gets the best seller badge on Amazon all the time, but I've always struggled with it let's take a look at how it handles the the sculpting the brush strokes the layering and all the things when i say sculpting i mean that i can blend and shade and work and blend and shade and work over and over again without it getting weird but as you can see it's streaky i'm getting streakiness where in several of the other papers there was an effortless blending as long as i didn't have too much water on my brush all right that looks a little better i'm able to lift out here Okay, that was a little better. I have to, it's almost like I have to add a little more water. It's not very forgiving if I'm not using enough water. Definite weirdness happening. I'm not surprised. Canson, for me, is notorious for doing unpredictable stuff on the surface. And that always drives me nuts. Lifting there was pretty nice. All right, moving on to the Fabriano Fat Pad. Adding that medium orange. I have really high hopes for this paper. I still think it's a contender for the winner here, adding the red. And there's a lot of texture in this paper. It's got an arches-like texture and that is starting to pop through. So I don't actually think it's splotchiness. Yes, this has a lovely, lovely take with the brush and different levels of water and pigment. It's allowing me to, in one stroke and twirl of the brush to really create some lovely ombre. So I'm pleased with that result. Now this had an eight second fail, which is I would say slightly higher than average across the board with this particular test. So we're gonna see how it handles lifting. I wanna go back in and add a little bit more color here because I'm pretty impressed with the way it's handling my shading techniques here. And remember with shading, with adding depth, you're gonna be using a lot of different techniques, a lot of different levels of water. So we have to make sure that our beginner paper is allowing us to do that. And this one's doing a nice job. All right, lots of lots of weirdness. I mean, lots of weirdness. So not very forgiving here for, for, you know, mishaps with too much water and experiments that are meant to be fun, not frustrating, not very forgiving. The lifting though is nice, but because of the eight second fail, you're not going to be able to do a ton of lifting before you see those pills. Moving on to Strathmore 300, adding that medium orange feels smooth. I like the way it glides on adding that red and let's try to blend these together and see what we're getting. Okay. Very lovely transition effortless. It doesn't look like the colors are just blending together and becoming one color. I'm still seeing a delineation between my orange, my yellow shining through. I'm able to kind of lift and yeah, I'm happy with that. That's decent. And I knew I was going to be. This paper always performs better than I expect. A moderate amount of weirdness going on. Now that line across that, uh, the paper started to curl. And so as that puddle dried, it created a line on the curve. And so that is more environmental failure. Lifting, fantastic. Fantastic lifting. Dare I say that might've been the best lift out of all of them. B paper, super disappointing on the fail number, five seconds. I was expecting so much more with 100% cotton paper. Let's see how it does with shading and a variety of techniques. All right, all right, not too shabby, not too shabby. I see a little potential for splotchiness in that darker area. Let's add in the red. No, okay, okay, I'm feeling it. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I can, I can accept that. Uh, but again, that that five fail number is just a deal breaker for me. Oh, gosh, look at that is a lovely, lovely ombre there. Gorgeous, just as you would expect of 100% cotton paper. But man, it needs to be more durable, it needs to be more durable. And take a look at that big blue splotch. Gorgeous, very forgiving. 
it just took that color and kind of leavened it out. It, it spread it out slowly and it dried slowly and evenly. And that could be also a factor of the environment. What kind of air circulation do you have? But these were all done within the same time frame. I did have a ceiling fan going. And so this paper, extremely forgiving. But I'll tell you what, lifting is wah wah. No, look at that. You, it, I could barely lift. I could barely lift. I'd have to destroy the paper. Strathmore 400. A lot of people swear by this paper. I am a absolute non-fan. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Let's see how it does with the shading, bringing in that reddish color. And you can see it is not doing anything effortless with the shading. I lift and it lifts too much color. It's almost like the surface is like slick ever so slightly. It's the best way I can describe it. Lots of splotchiness, lots of weirdness. This paper is going to fight me every step of the way. And of course, notice the super duper weirdness on the big blue splotch. So for me, not forgiving. It's got a higher fail number. The lifting is lovely. So those are bonuses, the higher fail number and the lifting all right, so which one will it be? Which will be our budget paper winner? Friends, head into comments and let me know which was your favorite, which would you consider using? And while you're at it, if you've been having a blast and really getting into this nitty gritty of all the paper goodness, give this video a boop. That's a like, friends. It really helps out my channel. Okay, I know the suspense is killing you. You've been waiting to hear which paper I think is the absolute best for your budget in the budget category. We're so close. Let's review. New Soho we tried, Gen Crafts, Strathmore Vision, Amazon Basics, Canson XL, Fabriano Fat Pad, Strathmore 300 Series, Arteza, B Paper Company, and last but maybe I think least, <laughs> Strathmore 400 series. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, most of these are under 50 cents for a nine by 12. And of course there is a United States Amazon shopping bias here because that is where I live. And that is often where I check pricing when I'm doing any kind of comparative research. So my final pick for the best may not align depending on where you live in this beautiful world of ours. Here's my top four, Soho paper. It was thin, but friends, it just acts a lot like quality watercolor paper. Canson XL because it takes a beating and it lifts well and friends, it just works. The Fabriano Fat Pad because it acts a lot like arches, but it doesn't take a beating. And of course, Gen Crafts, which has a lot going for it. One last detail I looked at before making my decision was how much these papers buckled. So how obviously tons of buckling. Canson, as I expected, not a lot of buckling. It's a thicker paper. I was a bit surprised. The Fabriano Fat Pad had a little bit more buckling than the Canson and in hand, it feels thicker. So that was a shocker. And last but not least, Gen Crafts, yep, lots of buckling, but the paper still feels really rigid in hand and I'm okay with that. Okay, so what paper do I think you are going to get the most bang for your buck? I think you're gonna be surprised. Can you guess based on the texture? This paper takes a beating. This paper provides incredible, simply achieved washes. It does a nice job with wet and wet. Gorgeous shading capabilities. My choice for the number one in the budget category is a shocker, I'm sure. Gen Crafts. You've probably not heard of Gen Crafts, or if you have, you've maybe tried their watercolor palettes. But this paper, I tried actually about a year ago when they sent me a few watercolor palettes and some paper, I was shocked. Definitive content information on this paper is a little difficult to find, but my best guess is that this is a 100% wood pulp paper. There's definitely no cotton going on here. And to make this even more exciting and even more shocking, this paper was the second most inexpensive on the list of 10 at 30 cents a sheet for a nine by 12 size. That is mind blowing. So if you can get over the fact that this has a very non-traditional texture compared to other cold press papers, and also that it's not a well-known name, you have got a winner on your hands. Head into comments. I have to hear, have you tried Gen Crafts paper? If you have, what do you think of it? Do you agree or disagree? And let us know why. And of course, if you have another favorite from this list or even one that's not on this list in the budget category, remember under a dollar for a nine by 12 sheet, 
I want to hear it and I know everyone else does too. Now there are some other budget supplies that you need to know about, especially if you're just starting your watercolor adventure. So head on over to this video and I'm going to show you everything you need to start this adventure when you only have $40 or less to spend. Until next time, friends, happy painting.